joined by um, PGA uh, Pro at the Toronto Municipal Lynx, Allison Tarr, and PGA Tour Pro, uh, Chris Reynolds, at the Salt Lake City Municipal Lynx. Um, both are fantastic people, can be found on the internet, Twitter, um, which is not part of the internet, I guess, it's like a subsection. Um, are the usernames? Allison Tarr, Jess Sequence, I'm Binary Gary. Happy to see you. Let's do a show. Okay, you failed. <laughs> Allison's Twitter username is Allison Plus. What did I say? Allison Tar. Oh man, I know I know her Twitter handle. I don't know why I messed that up. But I, mean, I, I thought you know my name, so that's what that proves. Well, it's actually on the screen, so yeah. <laughs> um, I I uh I felt so confident about intros today too. It was a good, it was it was a good pace. Pretty I like the. I liked the rhythm of it. Yeah, I mean, we're a whole two minutes in and we're ready to talk topic, so I felt like that was a win. I don't, I guess not. You can also hit us up, uh, hit the official Binary Jazz Twitter account up at Binary Jazz. Do we have like a little logo that says official? No. Okay, do we need like one? Check mark? I don't think we're going to get a check mark. Yeah, we're not going to get a blue check. Oh, I didn't mean that. I meant like, you know, like when you're, when you're, um, like the as seen on TV logo, right? <laughs> Like, I want that little starburst. Like, but a, little, it says, like a little official. stamp that says official. And I'm not sure where it would go other than, like, maybe at the end of every tweet. Certified. In that account. Official. Just in case, like, there's ambiguity. If you look at the account and you forget what account you're reading before you get to the end, you can see the official sticker that says it's officially lost. I'll see what I can do. I do like the idea of, like, trademarking every single tweet. <laughs> 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 sorry you can't say snarky things like that we have a trademark on it <laughs> like quality quality yeah. stuff is happening over here <laughs> yeah i don't know if that's the case but it'll be fun <laughs> why not uh, it's, a, it's yeah. a just in case it is a just in case uh the topic for this week <laughs> gonna jump in just gonna do it yes the topic this week is yard oh it's a dyson sphere oh <laughs> it's a dyson <laughs> sphere delicious dyson <laughs> which by the way like i actually sat down to eat dinner in front of a star trek episode and it i it was difficult to continue eating <laughs> when they kept talking about dyson spheres <laughs> you, you, you sat down to eat dinner in the dyson sphere episode I didn't know. I just we we've been rewatching them, and that'll kill your appetite. Like, it's yeah. a good, it, was, it was a good double hitter because then it was like Scotty from the original series. That is a great episode. So yeah, there was a lot happening, and I wouldn't have chosen to eat in front of it because I couldn't. I was alternating between laughing and then kind of gagging. <laughs> but, and and were there spit takes involved? I mean, was there food projected at the screen? Was mostly because my partner and I were watching it together and so when originally the Dyson Sphere subject matter was dropped he was just like what it's like are you kidding me? we can't do this yeah I was like oh we're doing it this is happening we're watching the whole thing while we eat dinner <laughs> it was okay. worth it. So what was actually the title because I interrupted you. oh uh Yarborough Yarborough uh, it is a well-known family of baseball players, the Arboros. Do they play in a specific league or team, or are they scattered? <laughs> oh, oh! I thought we were just supposed to discuss the topic. I didn't realize you were bringing questions. <laughs> well, I, I've got follow-up. <laughs> um, the Arboros, uh, most famously, uh, Clay pitched for the Toronto Blue Jays in the '80s, um, and Clay Jr. Uh, plays for the team in Miami. Um, the, uh, what are they? Marlins? The Marlins. Marlins. That's the one. Yeah, the two. 
Why are the two I, people so that I don't pay attention to baseball? That. Yeah. Why are the two people that don't pay attention to baseball the ones that, that were able to notice that or pick that out when you actually live in Florida and didn't know the name of your team? Well, Florida is a big state, number one. Uh, I don't watch baseball, so I will be the third person who doesn't watch. But to go to where they play in Miami is about a five-hour drive for me. But you gave me kind of a hint because I thought you were going to say fish, and then I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure – that it is a fish. Tomorrow. It's not a tarpon. It's not a swordfish. It's not a other grouper. Yeah, see, it's I not actually, a red. I actually knew because uh, I remembered when they were in a mullet. Team. The mullet. Yeah. When I when yeah, I was that'd be a great name I, for a minor league team, wouldn't it? When I, yeah. especially in Florida, like like Gainesville mullet. <laughs> oh, that'd be like. And Gainesville's inland, so it'd be even funnier because there are no um, no mullet there. Um, we famously um, had our minor league team renamed uh, last year from the uh, Jacksonville Suns to the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. You're kidding. No, I'm serious. That feels like a step down. I, I don't know if it was a step down or not, but it got an awful lot of media in the sports world for what a ridiculous, like another ridiculous minor league sports team name, which I mean was kind of the goal, I guess. I, I don't know what that gets you, right? Other people go, oh, there's a minor league team in Jacksonville. That's not a reason to stop. Also, <laughs> like a great mascot costume. It is. I don't remember the name. Great costume better than the sun. Like well, the sun was an, a, the mascot. The sun was the team. And the mascot was this like... Jumbo shrimp? No, kind of <laughs> furry looking like bear thing. Okay, that's when I say furry, I mean like the furry like subculture. Like it was a little... It wasn't like a... Co- it was like a weird costume. Like kind of bear thing. <laughs> Uh, what was his name? Was a step up. In that case, yeah, maybe, maybe from a legal perspective. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know the jumbo. Sh- I haven't. I haven't been to a jumbo shrimp game. I went to several Suns games. I used to drive past the stadium away from work, um, and uh, I took Tyler to a couple games. You know, it's, it's like a cheap outing. And I feel like it's a better mascot, and then you could maybe have snack. Well, I don't know, but who's ordering shrimp at a <laughs> at a sport i don't know maybe that's i don't know well. it's florida well, yeah, I, I, I would thing. not i would like, yeah right. i think there were shrimp of it like shrimp sandwiches available prior to ordering seafood at sports events these days i don't know that's like an i mean fried sea yeah fried shrimp absolutely yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. fried shrimp and beer that's but then so i guess good. it's kind of weird because then you're like eating the mascot i mean not yeah. eating beer chris <laughs> you're not supposed to like I, eat the mascot generally right i don't i i don't know the rules with these things <laughs> I'm not sure there's any, any, I mean, like, like manners dictate you would eat the mascot, but I don't think there's any rules against it. So FC Dallas in the major league soccer, uh, it doesn't, I mean, they don't have a a team name other than FC Dallas, but their mascot uh, is a longhorn uh, bull. So FC stand for football club. Yes. And they actually have like, for fucking cool, fucking cool. Uh, they actually have a, a longhorn bull, like mascot, yeah. like person running around. So in that case, probably most people would be eating the mascot if you're eating burgers. I mean, mm. not a longhorn specifically, but you know. I wonder. Back to Gainesville, um, the Cousin. college team there are the uh, uh, Florida Gators. I wonder. Um, I wonder if you can get Gator Tail at the stadium. Isn't that some sort of endangered no you can get gator tail at like every seafood place oh, in florida i guess that's just like wishful yeah. thinking from a vegetarian being like i'm pretty sure you shouldn't be <laughs> i mean of the things we eat in florida the one i feel the least guilty about is alligator alligator there are a lot of them uh, Maybe I'm thinking and their tails is, that, is there a difference i mean i know there's a difference but like yes one's definitely less prevalent right i don't know um the things i'm making up so crocodiles are, are like southern half of the state. Uh, we don't get crocodiles as much up in Jacksonville, but maybe. I don't know. Alligators, though. I mean, if there's a body of water in Florida, there's an alligator in it. Pretty alligator. much is the deal. So, I, I mean, they're, they're just like, they're like lizards, only a lot bigger, and, and they can kill you. And yeah, they, I guess if you ate enough lizards, they would kill you, too. But I, I, don't, I don't know what my point is here. The I, tea, I mean, think, alligators I I'm think, not too fond of. I don't think eating lizards is going to make them eat you. No, but I don't think eating alligators made them start eating us either. 
I think the point was like, you could probably gorge yourself on lizards and kill yourself, but ah. the lizards themselves are not going to kill you. Okay. Alligator, like, yeah, I'm, I'm hungry and you're close, you know? I mean, they're, they're totally afraid of humans, except for the ones that, that have that like, been hungry. exposed to humans are like, oh, well, cool. Here comes lunch. We can easily maul these creatures. <laughs> great. <laughs> I have a great photo. There was a park um, run on, I used to go to when we were first married, uh, and there was a gator that would hang out, like a, a very large gator. A notable size gator, I don't know, seven feet, eight feet, um, would hang on the side of the lake. And so one time I was like, I want a picture with him. So I like squatted down, like, I don't know, 30 feet from this gator. She's like, you gotta go closer. I'm like, okay, you gotta go closer. <laughs> you gotta go closer. I, I mean, I still was pro- I probably went like six inches each time, each time she said it. So I probably ended up like 28 and a half feet from this gator. And I still was like, just like waiting for like the camera to click because it was back in the film days. Um, and this gator to like, like turn and just like charge me and, well, they're fast when they want food. They are. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> but back to topic. Obviously, Yarborough is a uh, off-brand Marlboro. I th- I actually think, um, I think when I was thinking of the baseball thing, I think I got confused. Clay Yarborough, I think, is might even be my, my local representative's name. I think like I've seen political signs with that name on it. <laughs> you're like you're like it's not even a made up thing at this point i just <laughs> it's not there's a there's a person named clay yarborough he does not pitch for the uh Toronto blue jays but he does something notable because i've seen his name maybe on a ballot maybe, maybe on a ballot. i don't know if i voted for or against <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know probably you should know, you don't know what he stands i mean i'll know it when it's when it matters but I, like it's a it's a local thing it's like it's will not you? like it's well you really yeah I will. I'll do, I'll do my, I do my research before I vote. I mean, it's like school. I cram the night before. I don't, it's not like I think about it, you know, a long way out. I used to do vote by mail until I, until several times I voted by mail and my signature didn't match the signature on file. And they were like, oh, sorry, your vote didn't count. Did they, so, they actually told you that? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That there was a vote cast. It didn't match the signature on file. Would I like to update my signature on file? No, because it won't match next time either. Right. <laughs> Is it just an issue of your signature radically changing or you're just a messy signature? Or? I mean, I just have a mess. I mean, it, I don't, I don't I mean, know. What signatures it, I don't are messy though. Like that's kind of the nature. I mean, I, I would think that if you compared two of my signatures over the course of like two years, you would be like, mm, this may not be the same person. I, <laughs> I, I think I don't sign enough things to, like, oh, maybe I do like a loopy thing. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's not <laughs> consistent. It's not. So in person, I can show up and I don't know. I don't know. It's also fun in person. Because we also, we have almost exclusive vote by mail in Utah. Yeah. You can still, you can still go to the voting places, but everybody gets the vote by mail. And it's increased and it's increased uh, turnout. It's increased. That's interesting because in Florida, if you get vote by mail and you go to vote in person, you have to cast a provisional ballot until they determine if your vote by mail ballot has already been counted. So I have removed myself from the vote by mail list so that I can vote in person. I almost, well, I used to vote by mail, but now it's just, I just vote in person. It's nice. But I'm not like, I can only vote by mail for presidential elections. I'm not, my, my state votes don't count anymore because I'm not a resident. <laughs> wah, wah. For a while I was straddling a weird, in between so places. if you're not a resident then and you vote for president what state electoral votes apply for your vote i technically am still california but it doesn't law like i can't vote in local elections because you don't have a locality yeah you don't have like a governor and a representative so like yeah i'm not vote like so before when i was like in orange county i could vote on like my city and state stuff, but I can't do that anymore. Right, state stuff is out for you. Got it. Hmm. That's interesting. A Yarborough is a small, portable, paddleable vessel. You always go nautical. <laughs> it sounds nautical. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I, it, t- it sounds totally nautical. No, Anything it doesn't. Oh, like, you toss the Yarborough in the back of the pickup truck. Let's go out fishing. <laughs> nautical. Toss the 
I think that's, I think that's your, in the back of the fireworks. <laughs> I think that's your secret American South showing. I, I don't think it's secret. I mean, I, I live in, I live in the South. I, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Except that I feel like Florida only counts as the South like half the time. Cause the Northern part of Florida is definitely the South and the further South you go, the further North it gets. Wait, what? Yeah. So the Northern <laughs> part of Florida yes. is very much the South of the U S. Um, <laughs> like I'm, I'm uh, probably 40 minutes from the border to Georgia. Um, but it's very much, yeah. So, so Jacksonville being like a larger town, larger city, um, pretty blue collar, so pretty mixed. But if you get outside the city limits, like you were in the rural South. Um, and then as you get like Orlando, Tampa, uh, latitude and get further South, it gets more Northern. But not, but, northern, warmer. but not northern in the sense of the northern part of Florida is definitely the American South. Because yeah. that, that gives that whole thing like this weird cyclical. Uh, yeah, the South. Where like north and south are like interchangeable in a weird uh, codependent way. <laughs> it's like like the panhandle area. Like kind very of much. Like a, kind of like a dice southern area. U.S. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been? Have you been to the Keys, the Florida Keys? I have not. We 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 are. We want to go to Florida. We want to go to the to the Everglades and and the. Florida. Have we? Just, I feel like we've discussed the Keys. Have yeah, we? Probably. Okay. Well, I will go on record again and say that it is definitely a place to visit. Get get a cheap flight, rent a car from whatever airport you can, Miami area, and drive south and do it in daylight because it is just a beautiful view heading heading across those bridges and. Well, I mean, you know, sometimes flights are funky, and you, oh, well. We'll just drive to our hotel tonight, but the trip down to Key West is is half the fun. Um, it just gets more and more islandy, and the transition is it's it's great. Maybe I'm leaving this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the more I talk about it, the, the better it sounds. I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, toss the kids in the minivan, go to the Yarborough, and off we go. <laughs> um, it's, so it's probably it sounds like an old timey word. Is it an yeah. old timey word? It sounds like a place. So, Does it? it? It seems like that would be a trick, though, because if Allison gave us a place, then it'd be like, well, in this place, I mean, it's a place. It's, it's in southern Kentucky. Um, <laughs> but if it was a place... I mean, if the Arbor family. It would, yeah, if it was a place, then it would have to be notable because of something that happened in the place, like uh, the lynching of... What are you talking about? The Yarbrough family grew up outside of Louisville, right? And had easy access to baseball bats and became a baseball dynasty. Oh like, yes, the Yar the the, the well known. So the Yar town's name for that. Yarborough Yarborough Slugger. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's made out of a Much maligned. Of wood, I believe. Yeah. Yes, Yar Yarborough yeah. wood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going <laughs> to the Yarborough tree. Yarborough in front of things until we hit something that's close. Chop, so you don't think it sounds like an old timey word though? Just like Lincoln did. I yeah. don't think it, so I think it sounds like a name. Sounds like, yeah, I think it sounds like a name too, but. Weston Yarborough. <laughs> oh, maybe you're right. Maybe it is British. <laughs> it's either British or nautical. <laughs> well, I mean, if you, if you trace American history back far enough, I mean, old timey, like, is derivative of England, so. Oh, I thought you were going to say derivative of nautical themed stuff. Well, England is also nautically themed because they're an island. Um, but it's not a boat. The USS Yarborough. <laughs> yeah. well, okay, in that case, it might be a boat, but <laughs> it is not the name of a type of seafaring vessel. You don't go out near Yarborough to go fishing. Maybe you don't. <laughs> um... I don't know. I got nothing today. <laughs> it's a weird one. Just like how many Dyson spheres fit in a Yarborough? Ugh. It depends That's on the a horrible class. conversion. It depends on the class of Yarborough. Because if it's a class one, then you could fit maybe like 15 or 20 Yarboroughs or 15 or 20 Dyson spheres in the Yarborough. But if it's a class three Yarborough, then it's definitely more like 50 or 60 Dyson spheres. <laughs> so I'll figure your Dyson spheres. <laughs> you know, 
This is about about the size of the of the soccer basketball ball. size. Yeah, about the size of the soccer ball that you had on on screen earlier in the show. Yeah, for reference. Um, geez, I got nothing. <laughs> Just staring at that ball. Maybe it's a tool. It's a is it a tool of some sort? Oh yeah. The, oh no, I'm thinking wheelbarrow. The the yarbarrow wrench. <laughs> You don't pronounce wheelbarrow that way. You don't pronounce wheelbarrow like Yarbarrow. Wheelbarrow. Well, 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 well. That's that's the that's the south. Well, well. <laughs> um, hmm. Are there any words it, that you pronounce that you didn't know you were pronouncing oddly, like like that that are more commonplace? That Bris Brisbane. Also, how are you supposed to say it? Brisbane. 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 And, okay. and and Melbourne. Oh, that would throw me off. I, I feel like that's a that's like a constant thing for me, the conversation about. And and when I was in England, things. when I was in England, I went I went to uh, the University of East Anglia in Norwich, which is Norwich. Oh, oh, I the I W would... is silent. That's cool. Yeah, and the O's yeah. And A. as well as everything else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, constantly getting lost. If you, if you go to England, you just drop half the syllables. Just be pointing, being like, "I want to go here. How do I get here?" Well, um, Edinburgh, <laughs> Greenwich. Chris, I think we need a more analytical approach to this topic. Oh, really? Yeah. You can't so, break it down into parts like you normally do. It's yar. Bit... Well, it doesn't help anyway. Uh, the Latin root yar. <laughs> Oh, it's Yarr. a pirate thing. <laughs> Interesting. Yar. It's, it's a burrowing pirate. Um, Yarr, it's the, the clever Yarborough. Clever Yarborough. <laughs> it's a step of gopher. That has <laughs> the burrowing Yarborough. One eye, one eye is perpetually sort of half closed. So it <laughs> it's called the Yarborough. And it has difficulty burrowing as a result because it kind of just spirals because it can only see out of one. Pops out of the ground from time to time. <laughs> or maybe it's like a nickname for a marmot or something. Oh, it's a Yarborough. Oh, the Yarborough. Isn't a marmot like a like a veggie spread you put on things? No, that's marmite. <laughs> <laughs> Which I believe is not a derivative from a marmot. Well, <laughs> it is not. <laughs> you ran it out. Oh, <laughs> gross. What a <laughs> I, I hope at this point people know that they should not be thinking like eating while listening to this. <laughs> or maybe it's like the most, I don't know, like Dyson Sphere, I might be coming around to it. I feel like I'm trying to like maybe associating it with just good barbecue vibes of my own, mm. not the actual mm -hmm. meat sphere, but like oh. my own, my own derivative of, of, of a nice barbecue. I really hope I, even, that. Um, even, if, even if a Dyson Sphere, even if you made a veggie Dyson Sphere, it would still not get fully cooked unless you had a way of like infusing the middle with with i thought we discussed this yeah, don't I mean, you that's use why, like an that's electrical why, probe and yeah, you cook from the inside exactly, out yeah exactly. that, that's yeah. why you have and the problem that with that obviously is you don't get the snap in the casing that you would like when you the casing <laughs> <laughs> i had um i, had I like that the snap in the casing was was something that you would desire that's a desirable feature <laughs> no it's, it's like it's like <laughs> when it's, feature, it's a bug it's like when you burn your, your marshmallow <laughs> and, and you, you, it gets completely covered in yeah. flame and then you pull off the burnt part and you put it back into the fire. That's what my kids do. And then you burn it again. You pull off the burnt part. And you, put it, you just keep doing it over and over again. That's, that is so the you get to the core of what it is to be a marshmallow. <laughs> yes. That is huh. so good. Maybe your kids just need an electrode so they can just burn the inside to start with and that's just what I'm the outside. About. That's what I'm talking about. Give your kids electrodes. Oh, speaking of fun uh, electrical devices, I'm, I might not be able to actually lift I like this, where this is going. on camera. Oh, yeah, I can. Ooh, what is that from? That looks amazing. It's an oscilloscope. What are you going to use it for? I have no idea. <laughs> Where'd you? It's awesome. I've always wanted one of those. I'm going to put it on your old tiny submarine. <laughs> 
No, I'm get, I'm hoping I'm hoping that I can run uh I can run like audio through it, and like if I'm like making music, then you can just like see the music that's being produced. I Sick. like it. That's yeah. gonna be so cool. But I mean, I have no idea. I could I could. There's so many things I can do with it. <laughs> so <laughs> with that, that would that would, I'm like I don't know many things. Experiment. Where did <laughs> you? My possibilities are endless. <laughs> Did you just, yeah, is what, it a curb find? No, so so that, so I've talked about, I at least have talked in Slack about uh, uh, my partner's uh, grandfather, who is uh, one of the scientists that worked on the uh, first uh, atomic bombs. And he was a ridiculous scientist. And he had two, I believe. The best kind. If not more oscilloscopes in his little workshop in the basement. And so now that um, her grandmother passed, a couple months ago, um, the siblings, their kids, are going through all their stuff, and I had said I would be interested in one of the oscilloscopes, and they came back in the last trip that went when it, when her parents went up there to to start divvying up the random stuff. They came back with one of the oscilloscopes. That's amazing. So Is it radioactive? <laughs> no, I hope not. Okay. So I'm now the proud have owner of an oscilloscope. Uh, um, no, I don't have my um, my Geiger, Geiger counter. Geiger counter with me. Yeah, no. Is that the only way? Like, is that? The most common way to check. Why did we all just chime in? Geiger yes. counter. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, it, 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 well, because I mean, we all grew up like at the tail end of the Cold War. So to be fair, it's all possible. TV it always was have, worried about nuclear. It's it radiation. is possible that it could have um, uh, radioactivity just because uh, he did. They did live stored in, with a bunch of bananas. Well, no, um, <laughs> they did live in testing grounds um, when they were when they were building the bomb and they were doing the testing and all this stuff they lived on the base where they blew up the bombs so it i mean it is not out of their own possibility but i don't I think love, it's very what a cool thing to be able to get and then also you're going to be a oh, you're going to use it for such a cool yeah that's fascinating such a cool is. even if you didn't utilize it it's just, it's such just a, i mean sitting on the shelf yeah, it's, yeah it looks very, very there's cool. an oscilloscope what are you gonna the fact that you're actually gonna be utilizing it for something as well is also very cool yeah I, the only thing i'm not sure about is is the actual like uh connections but i think that one way or another i should be able to find like some kind of an adapter or something for the types of connections that it has mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I don't think he was. Using it, I don't think he was using it for sound. I think he was using it to gauge like electrical uh, charger or or connectivity or conductivity or something. Um, yeah. Because the stuff that he has is like he's got this clip um, that I believe like you would put on to something electrical and it would like show a a thing. It came with a bunch of wires. There's a thing. Oh, that, that's fine. Oh, and a stethoscope. <laughs> that's a bnc connector isn't it and then there's yeah, this yeah. thing i don't know oh there's radio of... shack still existed you could go get that connector like an adapter for that <laughs> they don't exist here like a do they exist at all I mean, uh there's so radio shack broke up as a, as a company but there are franchises that were that were locally owned that that still might exist but i don't think there's any left in utah Wow. Yeah. You can definitely oh that's gonna be a fun treasure treasure finding for cables and adapters. I I like hunting for cables. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have far too many of them. Just like adapters the, like, for things. The moment of truth where you're like you're like, I think I found the one and you're like, oh, there's that brief moment of <laughs> nope. <laughs> or yes. <sighs> so that's off topic. Unless, <laughs> unless you find that is, so. Yeah, unless unless I find the Yarbrough, unless I find the Yarbrough cable, maybe you should start calling people. Hey, do you have a Yarbrough adapter? <laughs> I, wish that, I wish that was the actual. I'm looking for a male to female Yarbrough. <laughs> How long do you need? Three meter and six meter. <laughs> oh, I love that you you did it in meters. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that, but cables are, I feel like cables are always measured in meters, right? No. Yeah. It's one of those weird, no. it can go either way, I think. I don't know. Yeah. And I've been, I've been catching quite a few um, TV shows on Netflix, uh, British TV shows, and they've, they have referred to things in um, miles several times. Mm -hmm. And it, I didn't realize, like it should have thrown me the first time I heard it. 
And I probably checked 27 times. I'm like, wait, why did they say miles and not kilometers? Are these like a BBC America show? No, this is like... Or a made-for-Netflix show in England? Because they do things stupidly sometimes where, like, they'll change... They'll change things to, or they'll use miles as a unit of measurement because they know the audience of the show is going to be predominantly in the United States. I, that's that's likely, the, likely the case. Um, I don't know. So we've reached the so, timer time. So let's get the top. What's a Yarborough? Figure, let's figure out what a Yarborough is. A Yarborough is um, a, a hand of cards with no card higher than a nine. So it's like cool. not a very good hand, basically. <laughs> it is an old timey word. So it it's is. like so it's like a mulligan, except not as bad. Yeah. Yeah. What's a mulligan? I thought it was a golf thing. I don't know. In 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 Magic the Gathering, if I don't if I don't have any lands in my hand, I can take a mulligan and reshuffle my deck and draw a new hand at the beginning of the okay. game. Okay. I didn't know that that term applied in anything else other than golf. <laughs> Mulligan? Yeah, hmm. it, I like that it does. Well, as local down. PGA Tour pro, it colors a lot of your thinking, obviously. The other thing about Yarborough, you're not wrong, is that it's sort of named after the second Earl of Yarborough, who was a British noble person. Who was a really bad card player? Yeah, he who was, was a really British pirate. Now, apparently he offered he would offer uh, bets for like a, a thousand pounds to anyone who who would, had a Yarborough, basically. So he made having a crappy hand desirable. Yeah, because basically because the odds of getting that kind of hand are like three thousand to one or something. Huh. So he basically so yeah, I I don't know if it it worked out well, for him. But. Let's define a hand. A hand is, is five cards? Um, the game you're playing? I think so, because I think in this case it was originally bridge was, was the way that, so bridge is Yeah. Whoa, first place. Um, it sounds like a really shitty bridge hand, although I've never played bridge. I don't know that much about it. I've played um, uh, pinnacle, which I'm heard is sort of similar. I think it is. It's yeah. If you if you don't have anything, well, I don't know. I don't. I'm not a good enough There's, bridge player to. There are quite a few games like around that similar concept of building like melds and hands and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Different takes with and without partners and etc. So. And like playing. I feel like bridge, if you know one, than the others. Playing bridge is dependent a lot on your partner as well. So like, it's like psychic communication and that's why yeah. when people well, lose I their think... bridge partner it's a big deal <laughs> okay. He... okay that makes sense because it's because pinnacle doesn't quite go down that far but you do have to like you're giving stuff to your partner uh yeah. and your partner is the one that's getting the points and so um yeah it's you kind of you kind of need to have some sort of nonverbal communication going on to like understand like what the other person will do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of like winks, but not winks. Right. Yeah. Hmm. What's that whispering noise? Is that the oscillator? No. No, uh, there's some bird or bug. Or like cicada? Bug. It could be. I found a couple shells. Oh, um, so uh, questions. We don't have any listener questions, uh, so you can submit your questions on binaryjazz.us or at Twitter, at binaryjazz. But since we don't have any listener questions, we have some questions that Allison has saved in the archives. Uh, if you were a teacher at Hogwarts, what subject would you teach? Uh, beginning levitation. <laughs> Is that a class? <laughs> Why beginning? I don't think I'm very good at it. I certainly can't, <laughs> certainly can't teach advanced levitation. But you'd be the teacher. You can dream big, Gary. I mean, I have uh, to leave you one chapter ahead of the students, right? So. <laughs> Electromancy. Sounds exciting. Yeah. Or, or, or uh, astroacoustical physical physics. <laughs> <laughs> Astroacoustics, Mancy. 
The one rule to teach something is you have to be able to pronounce it first. You have to know what it is. <laughs> yeah, you have to Got be able it. to spell it. Yeah. Geometry. Yeah. Divining the Geometry. future through musical interpretation. Okay. Ooh, I take that class. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a field I just made up. Uh, Allison, what would you be, be the teacher of? Obviously, you um, have here. I have. Potions. I like mixing things. Ooh, or the magical creatures. Because mm. I feel like I'd be better at it than Hagrid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think I'd be very good at potions. I don't think I'd be very good at most of the things uh, that are taught at Hogwarts. So I feel like my subject would have to be something that doesn't exist yet. Yeah, so you bring it to yeah. the table, and you're yeah. like, I think that the students need to learn this. Yeah. yeah, or like, like, like digital witchcraft, or like you know, like technomancy. Yeah, there definitely needs to be a bit more of that. Yeah. There needs. To we need to add we need to in we need to inject some like shadow run into into well they need more digital literacy just like yeah. today's <laughs> Every, yeah so. yeah i mean flying cars is the coolest thing you can do no you can you can build an airplane and make it like magical that's a good point <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, more leg room more leg room I need, I need more. <laughs> I need to be able to that recline. That's like three degrees more than you get anywhere else. This recline is so luxurious. How do they achieve it? <laughs> or like, I mean, you know, the freaking TARDIS is basically magic. And it's bigger on the inside. That's true. So you can make things bigger on the inside, obviously. Like a Dyson sphere. Like a Dyson sphere. That obvious. Bigger in the inside. <laughs> Everybody so wants. If, if, yeah. Give the people what they want. That's what I say. <laughs> the people want Dyson spheres. More, more internal. They getting into. Less casing. More, more of the good stuff inside. Oh. <laughs> I feel like this episode deserves like a, like a congratulations. Like, congrats, listeners, you made it this far. <laughs> a number of Dyson Sphere references. Yeah, I mean, that and eating lizards. And if you haven't at this point listened to the Dyson Sphere episode, you might want to listen to the Dyson Sphere episode. Maybe out. not. <laughs> Depending on which way you're leaning. No, I think you probably should. Yeah. If, you're, if you're listening to this episode... And any other episode, because we're going to mention Dyson Spheres in the future as well. Uh, probably you should, I, if you don't listen to the back catalog at all, that's the one you should go back to. That's true. <laughs> the representative episode. Of uh, it's not even oh. really representative, it's just the running joke. You, you, you all aren't, um, so when you buy bacon, right? Like no. the back, there's, you don't, but when you don't, when I buy bacon, the back there's a little window and <laughs> It always makes me laugh because it says, it's like a picture. It says represent, like it's all the way across. It says representative slice, which makes the bacon seem so much more dignified. Like you should be wearing like a tie and like a coat. <laughs> like I just, I just can't help but laugh every time I see representative slice. I am the representative of this slab of bacon. I, right. I have like, so many questions. I'm going to go to the grocery store and be like, where's the bacon window? Like I just, I have, I have no idea what you're talking about. I, I I just feel like <laughs> I just feel like there's a better name for it than representative slice. Like don't don't call it anything. Just here's a picture of a bacon or like a window or like a clear plastic thing so you can see the inside of the package. I don't know. Isn't... Representative slice just seems like a little I don't know. Presumptuous? I, that's the word I'm looking for, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you're bacon. You're not this is it's a pretty like low level contract here. I am purchasing you to cook and eat. Like you don't need to stand for anything. We just need to fry. Of all the meats though. Yeah. Maybe that's of all the meat to say. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Do you yield the floor to representative slice? <laughs> like a little medallion and like a top hat on a bacon 
I thought I was thinking of representative slices as like a monocle as being as being the representative being the title uh, representative slice being the title but yes rep- thank you for listening to binary jazz if you like this episode you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play you can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binary jazz don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.